Hi, today I'm going to unbox my new resin 3D printer, the Creality LD002R. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And this is the second in a new video series I'm doing on 3D printing. And in the first video, I talked about different types of 3D printers and how to choose the best one for you. In this one, I'm going to do the unboxing of my new 3D printer. It's an MSLA 3D resin printer, and it's by Creality. So let's get started. So I decided to spare you the spectacle of me trying to get this out of this box because it really is a very tight fit, and it was quite a struggle. But let's take a look at the box before we set it aside. It is very uh, heavy cardboard, very sturdy. Um, it has these, I hope, hopefully international symbols on the side because it's written in Chinese. I think this is the this way up sign, which is very important. I think I would have made that a bit bigger. Uh, there's a glass here. I think maybe that means fragile. I'm not sure. An umbrella, which means don't get it wet. And I don't know what the three means, but um, it arrived in pretty good condition. I had a few crushed corners that were double taped, but other than that, uh, everything inside looks fine. So here's what the packaging looks like after you've slid it up out of the box. The top has a piece of cardboard to protect what's inside the top of the first layer of foam. So here we have the power cord and a package of things and an extra piece, I believe, of release film. I think this goes under uh, where the resin vat is and has to be replaced periodically so they give you an extra. I'll set that aside. Let's see what's in the Ziploc bag. So So we have some protective gear. So we have these masks. They're kind of the simplest of surgical style masks. Um, I don't know what these would protect you from except maybe resin splashing onto your face. It won't protect you from uh, fumes if that's what you're concerned about. So that's one thing to keep in mind. There's two of those. There's a couple pairs of rubber gloves. Very important for working with liquid resin. Um, there's two types of scrapers, a metal one and a plastic one, and I guess I'll be learning when is the appropriate time to use which. And there's a brush that, I don't know, might be useful in cleaning the um, uncured resin off of a printed piece. Not really sure about that. Uh, these are filters. So. If you want to pour the resin that's in the vat unused back into a bottle and use it again, you can put this over the bottle and pour it through and it will filter out any bits of cured resin or semi-cured resin that's fallen off. So that's what those are for. Very important, the USB stick that has the software on it, including the slicing software. After sales service card. Oh, a small screwdriver and some Allen wrenches. I think these are for leveling the build plate. And finally, very important, the instructions. So what I always do is I stop at this point and I read this, and we'll continue after I've done that. So after reading the instructions, which are both in English and Chinese, um, I didn't learn anything critical to the rest of the unboxing, so we'll just proceed. So I'll take off the rest of the foam pieces here on the side, protected with a layer of bubble wrap. All right, I'm going to have to pick it up and not do it by the orange cover because that is the lid. 
I saved you from one struggling scene, but not the second. Here it is, bottom foam. Okay. Put on my glasses. Take the safe approach, cut off the bubble wrap. Oh, and it's lovely. There we go. So this is the orange UV protecting, very sturdy acrylic cover. And inside, more foam. So it feels like there's more inside of here. Let's set this aside. This doesn't come off. E oh, here, a piece of foam insert here. And that's protecting the build plate. So there you go. Very well packaged and has arrived in good condition. So one of the things I'm trying to accomplish with this series is to give a very realistic view of what it's like when somebody who, like me, someone who's an experienced maker but really has no experience in 3D printing, decides to start doing 3D printing and particularly with the resin printer. So I'm going to show you it really as I learn it. And I think the advantage of that is if, uh, of course, hearing very experienced people has a lot of value, but sometimes those people don't appreciate how much a beginner doesn't know. So you're really going to see what's required. I'm going to talk about everything as I do it because um, something might be helpful to you. So when I got this book out, I've plugged it in here. I don't plan on printing in my studio. I take safety very seriously. I have a room where I have ventilation and I'm going to move into that to do an actual print. But just on this initial look at it, I've, I've plugged it in here, and I've looked at the book. The book says, assemble the 3D printer, and their version of assembly is, this is the machine body, that's the cover, put the cover on, and you're done. That's not exactly true, because in the picture here, they show the, the, um, the build plate as already being installed. And maybe they did used to ship it that way, but that's not how they ship it now. So you have to raise this part up and, and put on that plate yourself. So let's take a look at how you do that. If you start at the beginning, this is the USB drive that I've plugged in the, the slot here, and this is a very convenient location to have it towards the front of the machine instead of in back. There's three buttons at the top level of the menu, Tools, System, and Print. I'm going to push Tools. And the first item there is called manual. And that's how you move this on the Z axis up and down. And it has a home button, an up button, and a down button. And it also has three increments, 0.1 millimeter, 1 millimeter, and 10 millimeters. So if I press 10 and I press up, it's going to go up 10 millimeters. And I think I just have to keep doing that to get it up with enough clearance to uh, install that plate. Now, it says in the manual that this has been leveled in the factory and that I'm not going to need to level that plate. But I'm going to uh, take a look at that and see if I believe that's true. Most of the people that have done unboxings and initial prints on this have had success with the the uh, from the factory leveling on that. So this is easy to take on and off. Um, you just slide it on. 
and tighten it. And now I'm going to unscrew the resin vat. I'm going to put on my glasses. And I want to take a closer look and see if it looks to me like when we home that plate, if it seems to be perfectly level. So now if I just hit the home button, it's going to go all the way down. And by the way, there's this protective film on it that I'm going to remove, but not until after I'm convinced that the, the thing is perfectly level. It certainly does look level to me. Um, I think that's probably going to be good enough. But if it weren't, all you need to do is to get out your the appropriate Allen wrench. And there are four little bolts here. You loosen them. You home it like I just did. And then you would put your hands down to hold it tight, and you would tighten those in place. But it looks to be level to me, so I don't think I need to do that. So now, I can put it back up. And what are some other interesting things to point out here? Um, there is this carbon filtration system that comes on this printer. I can feel that it's, it's pulling in some air there. But I am going to move this to a place where I have my own ventilation to the exterior, and I'm going to set that up right behind the machine so that it pulls all the fumes off that I can. So I'm going to reinstall this. I'm going to move it to its new home, and then I'm going to put some resin in it and see what happens. So this is the temporary home for my uh, 3D printer. I'm doing it here on top of my pottery kiln because I have ventilation for the kiln. Normally uh, that outdoor ventilation is coming, pulling through the kiln, through the bottom of the kiln, but I have a little thing rigged up here in the back where I'm using magnets to hold it right behind the printer so that it'll pull the fumes off. And I used a bubble level to make sure that this top is level, but this is a very sturdy surface and it's in a self-contained room so it won't let the fumes out into the rest of the house. So before I get on my protective gear I just want to say that um, I'm using this Elegoo Mars ABS-like photopolymer resin UV wavelength 405 gray. Got this um, online. Shake up the bottle before using. Wear gloves and mask. Keep away from children and dust. Okay, be careful with it. There are three different markings. I'm going to put this up a little higher. Move back, back, tool, manual, up. It has three markers on the side that show three different levels of uh, resin. I don't know yet how to know how much resin the model I'm printing, which is a test model they've given me, not the Eiffel Tower, but the smaller model laying on its back. Um, I'm going to get geared up here, and then I'm going to pour it in, and I'm probably going to pour to the middle mark because I just don't know a smarter way to do that. I don't want my pr first print to fail, so that's my strategy. Unfortunately, at this point, the battery in my camera died, so you can't see me pouring the resin. But to start the print, all you have to do is push the print button. Then you'll see all the 3D models on your USB drive. You push the one you want, you verify it's the correct one, and you push the arrow button. While it's printing, you can see what layer you're currently printing. You have a progress bar. It reminds you of the model you're printing. You see how much longer you have to go and how long it's been printing and which slice you're on out of the total. So this print is currently at 9% and that sound you hear is my ventilation system. 
but see how the plate is rising up a little bit, letting resin flow underneath and then going back down to cure the next layer. It's going to do that over 2,500 times during the course of this print. This is what it looks like at 62%. Um, it's risen out of the vat now and you can see that it's attached properly to the plate. So it's 1.30 in the morning. The print just finished. It took 12 and a half hours. Let's see what it looks like. So i am got my protective gear back on. I'm going to leave the ventilation on until I take this lid off and let the smell out. So, looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to take it over the table and clean it the traditional way, or the most basic way, which is with isopropyl alcohol. I watched a Creality video about how to remove it from the plate, and they suggested using a spray bottle for your alcohol. And that was effective, but the fumes were really bad. Then it took me about three minutes to break all of the supports off of the back. And I've set up three containers of liquid here. The first I'm going to put pure alcohol in, uh, over 90% isopropyl alcohol, hard to find right now during the pandemic. And then two containers of water, and the idea is that that middle container is going to get pretty contaminated from the alcohol. I shake and rotate the piece in the alcohol, and then I move it to the center container of water and shake that in there as well. Then I set it in the last container, let it soak for a second while I use the alcohol to clean off the build plate and the spatula. I thought at this point my print would be clean enough that I'd be able to cure it, but I took it to a bright light and looked at it more closely and found out that it still had uncured resin on it, so I had to use a brush to clean it up. The brush and the alcohol did a good job of cleaning away that resin. So let me try to summarize the main things I learned from my initial experience with my new resin printer. First, the impression I got of the Creality brand based on my unboxing was that it was a very reliable brand, uh, but economical. And that is consistent with my experience with the printer. Um, it's no frills, but it's very high quality. It, it, um, it worked easily. Uh, it gave me great results. Um, so I'm, I'm quite impressed. If I have any issues, it would be concerns that maybe in the future, if I need support, that the Chinese-English language issue might make that a problem. But I don't know that. I just know some of the translations weren't that great. Let's talk about some of the things that are in the box. Uh, first of all, rubber gloves. You need lots of these, and the ones they give you work just fine. They only give you two. These face coverings, though, as I thought, uh, while they might protect your face from splashes, they do nothing about fumes. And for me, the resin wasn't the big issue. The problem was more the uh, isopropyl alcohol, especially when you use it in a spray bottle, which is what they suggested in their videos, and you aerosolize it. So if I continue to work with isopropyl alcohol, I'll use one of these masks. Now. I'd really like to get rid of the alcohol though, and so I'm investigating a number of different industrial cleaners that might work. Plus, I'm looking into this water washable resin, because if this works, that solves a lot of problems. So I'll have a video about this in the future. As for the spatulas, the plastic one worked great for getting the model off the plate. This one is very sharp, and I'm not sure yet what I need it for, and maybe I won't need it for anything. We'll see. The brush they give you really is a terrible brush, but it, it tells you an important idea, which is that the brush might be useful. I ended up using this little one here from my brush supply, and it really let me get into all the, cre the creases and detail to clean out that uncured resin. Other tools you're going to need to supply are the flush cutters and the uh, small pliers to help you remove the supports. 
And let's talk about supports for a second because you'll remember that um, this model was oriented like this uh, with all the supports coming off the back. And the thinking of that, and that is the recommendation most videos make about how to do supports. But they think you never see the back. And in miniatures, especially when you're painting, you do see the backs. They're almost as important as the front. And the back of this little girl here looks like a plucked chicken skin. And so when it's, I do the final cure, I'm going to have to sand that, but I'd like to minimize that in the future. So I'm investigating best practices for adding supports to models, and I'll have a video about that. I haven't yet replaced the resin in my vat, so I, I don't know about this. I, am, I have also not replaced the FEP film, but I'm looking at more economical sources for buying that because that is a consumable you're going to need to buy in the future. And then finally on curing, this isn't cured yet because I've had no sunshine since I printed it a couple days ago. And I had bought this UV light on Amazon. But when I opened it, it had so many warning labels everywhere and I started reading up about it. And the truth is these lights can be kind of deadly. So I really don't want to have to build an enclosure for that and everything. And this is one of the reasons why I opted to buy the AnyCubic Washing and Curing Station, which I'll be talking about in my next video. So that's uh, things that are coming up, uh, tips on curing, tips on maintenance, tips on supports, and different types of resins. If you're interested, please subscribe to my channel.